Welcome to Bread and Roses, everyone. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Wurzbuya. In this week's program, we're going to be talking about freedom of expression and the press, why it's so important, and the attacks on them. We'll also have an insane fatwa from Bangladesh and the Islamist herds out to decapitate a Greek goddess statue. Our slice of life is of two wonderful siblings playing chess, and showing a human face vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, this sort of anti-Semitism and anti-woman restrictions of the Islamic regime of Iran. And the interview this week is with Shabana Rahman from Norway, who is breaking taboo and uh, boundaries. And lovely interview. Yeah, stay with us. Hope you enjoy this week's program. Increasingly in the news and in our lives, we are seeing an increase in censorship of all forms and restrictions on freedom of expression, including freedom of the press. And of course, we're seeing this in the United States, for example, and Trump banning certain press outlets from being able to cover his uh, events. And we've also see that in British universities, for example, where those who are dissenters from uh, the Islamist narrative are prevented from entering. And what's interesting is that previously, you know, freedom of expression, the press, for example, were always seen to be the cornerstones of any democratic society. And today, it's seen to be okay to do that. It's, seen, it's, it's normalized to an extent. And very often people on the left, and of course we're on the left as well, see it as something progressive if you censor people because then you're stopping some sort of harm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You'll see this movement start with the Islamist in in Ulysses come back into sort of attacking uh, European societies effectively and values of entitled, uh, um, uh, enlightenment. Uh, the key issue is that now people in power and different levels trying to restrict citizens from either being able to debate, discuss, or actually having the right information to be able to make decisions. I think that's such a key issue. In America, you'll see that the uh, the press secretary for the uh, for Trump administration, they are trying to limit and start dividing various uh, news outlets, news organizations into fake news organizations, into you know people that they can work with. The most right being are sort of becoming the friends and excluding some because they you reported badly on me. This is the cornerstone of any dictatorship or any authoritarian, type, any authoritarian yeah, uh, sort of state. And also, I mean, the thing is that there, there are people who argue, you know, what I find interesting is you've got people on the left who'll say that some people shouldn't be able, allowed to speak because what they say amounts to real harm, though they're just speaking, basically. Uh, and you have people on the right saying, you know, we need to defend free expression while they're trying to defend the banning of the Quran, for example. And the point here is that, first of all, is that if you're defending a right, it can't just be for those who look like you or think like you. It has to be for everybody. That's essential when we're defending freedom of expression. That means defending the rights of people you don't agree with. That's key. And also understanding, you know, some people will say, well, it's, you know, if a university student union stops Maryam from speaking, well, they're not the government. But the point is that it helps the government. It helps those in power to in restrict freedom of expression yeah. and to make censorship yeah. into a norm. And that's, you know, the, the speed of change in, in these days in society is so, is so you know, it's, it's amazing, it's breathtaking. Defending a principle is not an um, academic discussion, um, you know, and part of this attack on freedom of expression and freedom of information and having free debate is actually trivialization of the issue. In, we've, had, we've had in the debate on the uh, Warwick University and Goldsmith um, and various restrictions in the university, there is that line of argument to say, look, German Greer, she could write and she can, you know, all the news media are talking about her, so she's not, her freedom is not uh, restricted. Or Mariam, look at her, she writes all these articles, she's got her blog, and everybody, if they want to go and uh, listen to her. No, the, the, the issue is that, that a university should have the 
ability and every single student should have the right to hear people directly and engage in debate and thinking and people who try to trivialize this discussion the part and parcel of uh, the attempt to restrict um, uh, freedom of expression mm -hmm. and, and and to undermine it and it is important not only to protect the principles of freedom of expression but also have these debates uh, for us to be able to unpick it and defend basic uh, rights of human beings to express themselves. Yeah, I mean, and also the other issue is that when words are equated with real physical harm, there's a problem, you know, and equating uh, offence with real harm against people, attacks against people, there's obviously a problem here. I think free expression should be free, should be unconditional, unless there's an incitement to violence. And I think, you know, what, what I find very interesting is this also is the fact that in all of this, those in power are the most privileged and they're becoming untouchable in a sense. Religion is an example. Mm -hmm. So we're not allowed to offend the religious, though there are of course lots of religious people who aren't offended, but they don't count. Yet it's fine for religion to offend or the religious to offend my deeply held sensibilities. That's all right, you know. And again, it's, it's because it's not about really stopping discrimination it's not really even about being civil and not hurting each other's feelings. It's about safeguarding and saving religion and making it untouchable. And that's yeah. not yeah. possible. And, and this is um, interesting. Uh, Earlier in the week um, when there was um, a debate at West Princeton University uh, on, mm -hmm. on the diversity <coughs> and secularism, there were a lot of attempts, attempts by the um, um, Islamic Society of West Princeton University, ISOC, to stop the event going ahead. But it went ahead, you know, kind of, you know, Thanks to uh, everybody who's objected and the University of Westminster who stood firm and said, no, we want this uh, um, meeting to go ahead. And it was it was really a meeting. Everybody came. They had a debate and a discussion and uh, people carried on. Nobody was harmed. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, uh, actually enhanced enhanced everybody, everybody's view of each other would participated in that meeting. And that was a victory for freedom of expression in, in London and University of Westminster. Yeah, I mean, I think this is not an academic discussion, as you yeah. said earlier. This is, you know, a, a hugely important right, especially for people who are dissenting, you know, people who don't want to uh, accept the status quo as it is, who want to challenge that which is considered sacred, whether it's religion, whether it's nation, you know, nationalism, whether it's borders, anything that's considered sacred. Uh, and that's why it's so important, uh, you know, and it's something that, um, I think it, it really is a matter of life and death for so many well, people. A, a lot of people, is yeah. if you want to improve your life, you need to Let's have freedom talk. of expression, yeah. you need to be able to debate, the, think critically and uh, break taboos. Recently I was in Norway for a conference and I got to finally meet the wonderful Shabana Rehman and you know this interview is something that I'm really looking forward for you to see because I think the thing about Shabana Rehman is that she talks about how important it is for people who are afraid especially of those in power and the, the religious right and the Islamists to be able to laugh at those they're afraid of because it does help to break the fear, it does help to challenge those who are asserting their power on people who very often feel powerless to complain or to, to yeah, criticize. And not only that, uh, breaking taboos, but also she's a woman who, a woman who is doing this. She is, and that's what the Islamists and the religious hate, having independent, free-thinking women. And that's what gives her a lot more power in society. She breaking taboo on all sides. For everybody, all aspects of the Norwegian society and European society, I think we need to recognize there's, there's a lot of people uh, like Shabana, yeah. they are precious and we need to support them. One thing that she's done, is, which is I think is brilliant, she's actually picked up one of the mullahs, the chief sort of terrorist linked uh, um, a guy in, in, in Norway, and uh, she's picked him up in a, a meeting and shaken him a bit and put him down. <laughs> I think that should be a tradition of all free thinkings everywhere. Yeah, I think we should, uh, as you had said before, we should have Shabana come and do training sessions on how best to pick the person up and how best to shake and them. And everybody <laughs> in your history has got to have you picked up a mullah and shake them and put them back? I mean, this brings equality. It brings people down to everybody's level. It brings people sort of equal levels playing field so you can have a, a reasonable 
sort of discussion, debate, and nobody's above anybody else. Something yeah, like and also, I mean, when you have people saying that, you know, you shouldn't be offending, you shouldn't be insulting people and, and ideas, the reality is it's not about insulting people, it's about being able to criticize ideas that some will find offensive, but it's through this sort of criticism and offense that human society has progressed, and it's important to defend precious people like Shabana. She opens the way for a lot of people, and it's important for this dissent. Of, of course, place. I think mean, that's just such a key important. Uh, dissent equals directly with the condition of people's life. That's why it's so important. If there any in any society that you want to improve people's life, people fighting for better and from environment, from the living standards, everything. It's, you, you have to measure the level of dissent, level of uh, ability to criticize and, and breaking taboos. And the space for that, yeah, definitely. Now stay with us and watch this fantastic interview. Shabana Rahman, it's a great pleasure to finally see you and meet you. Thank I, you. I wanted to ask you about your brilliant work. You know, you are pushing uh, really important ideas, breaking taboos through your comedy. Why do you do it? Well, um, I think every uh, every person, every human being has their own f um, form for uh, humor of comedy, what they want to laugh about. And I started as just that person who just want to laugh with my fellow uh, Norwegians. Uh, but the reaction I received just uh, being a funny woman on stage was uh, uh, terrifying because um, there were reaction telling me that you shouldn't say that, you shouldn't wear this, you shouldn't speak about uh, that, or you shouldn't be at the uh, stand-up stage at all. And uh, my answer to this was reacting with performance art because uh, basically what they were telling me is that I'm a I'm a Western whore because I'm using um, my freedom of speech. Uh, and uh, do you think you are uh, um, blacky like you will ever be a Norwegian? Uh, and this was so, you know, how should you react to that? Uh, what, uh, what is the, uh, what they want is it? What they want me to do to accept me, to love me? And because I, I really couldn't understand why all this hate is coming from. So I decided it's no other alternative. So I took off my clothes and body painted my body with a Norwegian flag and asked them back on the stage, this is my body, this is the country I'm living in, what's your problem? This body is in this country, a free country, I'm going to speak out my mind, uh, why do you have a problem with this? And of course, um, I know I knew what I was doing, uh, but I want to show it to the society. It's not my actions; it's their reaction, which, which are, the, are the problem, uh, and who are uh, stopping me to something uh, beautiful as making people laugh. And what I saw after that is a lot of. Uh, people who are hating, especially women, for being just a free, happy woman. And that became my comedy. When other comedians were uh, making fun of politicians or daily life, uh, my material was about those people who are uh, uh, just hating equality, hating laughter, hating that women are showing that they're own their own body and believe me there's a lot of material uh, out there uh, it wasn't basically um, comedy about religion um, people told me oh she's a comedian or mocking culture mocking a religion no I make comedy about religion mocking me I make comedy about culture mocking me that's my comedy um, and people who come to the shows, they see that. And um, right now, uh, I have been doing this in 20 years, and a lot of beautiful uh, um, voices have arrived. A lot of women from different cultures have seen that it's okay. I can also choose my own uh, words. I can choose my own career. I can choose laughter, humor. I can be out there having fun. It's okay. So I'm coaching them to uh, help them to understand, to keep that laughter, because that's what they are after, to make us stop laughing. 
I mean, I think laughter and comedy is so hard hitting, more than many other things. And do you think that's one of the reasons why you get that sort of reaction as well? Well, I think when you laugh, you can't be afraid and laugh at the same time. So laughter shows uh, females who are not afraid. And uh, it's, it's not hard to get that. Uh, it's uh, it's really easy to get that. What they the, what they are getting is their free women. What will happen with the world if all women start laughing, laughing at the mullahs, laughing at you know all the forces they are getting us through? So it, I don't believe it's hard to get. They're really getting what this is all about. It's about surviving. It's about making your mind free. So. And I believe more women should do that, also in the Western countries, because we are raised to understand that it's the males who are funny, who belong on on the stage to be, you know, have the solo performances. No, women can do it as well. It's not like we belong to some dark stages where, you know, where women should talk about these dark things we are uh, going through. So let's show them. Let's show them we can laugh, and that laughter is okay. Do you sometimes think you go too far, maybe? I mean, I have saw... I don't. I mean, that's just a general question, but I saw you picking up one of the yes. <laughs> clergymen, and I thought that was really funny, and also mooning people. I mean, do you think... I mean, some people will say you just go too far. Yes, I, I heard that, that you go too far, and have you forgotten your roots, lifting mullahs and mooning? But what they should understand, it's threatening a woman because she's using her freedom of speech that's going too far this is what's going too far is uh, lifting mullah in a nightclub where the mullah was <laughs> promoting his book that's not going too far but promoting a book who um, defends sharia I think that's going too far promoting stoning of, of uh, homosexual that's what really is going too far we should ask the question ba- back what is it about going too far? Having fun is not going uh, about going too far at all. It's about being free. So when people are telling uh, women that you are going too far just because you chose your own uh, or speak your own ma- mind, I think it tells me a lot about the attitudes against uh, against women and about the misunderstanding and misperspective about what going too far is. Because what we are telling is enough is enough. You go too far. And what do you think about, I mean, the sort of, on the one hand, people telling you to behave like a proper woman, and the other, uh, you know, there are those in the Norwegian government, for example, that homogenizes everybody who looks different or comes from somewhere else. Mm. Do you find sometimes that you're stuck in these two, between these two pressures? No, I think comedy have given me the total freedom to define my own expression. And even if they are people who are being stuck between those th- two things and it, it, it can really happen I think uh, artist is uh, can, uh, can could be the voices to def- define and cr- create what is it to be a human being in a plura- plural world you know in, the, in a multicultural world and freedom is to choose and pick your identity whatever you like one day I'm this another day I'm this uh, and we see that rock stars do it all the way, you know, uh, playing with all these identities, and it's okay. I think uh, women with immigrant backgrounds also should have that that freedom. They are suppressed to choose one look, one identity, one group, and we, we need to break that, especially female artists need to break that to see that we have a variety of, uh, of expression of how we are, and it's not uh, a defined thing at all. It's, it's just about moving, movement and new expressions all the time. What's your favorite uh, comedy act or joke that you have uh, that you love from everything that you've ever done? Um, uh, it is actually one which is really hurting. Uh, I made this joke after several uh, attacks uh, and several dirty attacks on me uh, with bad language. Um, And 
I don't know if you can tell it on <laughs> on screen. Okay. Well, uh, and I actually delivered it a couple of times, and the reaction I'm going to tell you about. But it, it goes like this: um, that when I started doing comedy, uh, some people start sending me these hate messages, and one guy came to me after a show and said, "You're just a packy whore. All that you want is a white cock in your mouth. That will shut you up." And I was thinking, well, he's right. It will shut me up. But when I'm done with that, I will speak again. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. You're brilliant. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>The insane fatwa this week is from Bangladesh and a bunch of Hezbollah thugs and herds coming into the streets as they usually do in order to protest something. And whenever they come to protest, it's always to protest something good. You can never find anything bad that they're protesting against. Uh, this time is it, it, this time again it's in the statue. A statue of they, they justice. Want to, they want to behead the, <laughs> the Greek goddess which is a statue that's on a Bangladeshi court. The Supreme Court. And also, mm. uh, and it is, it is a beautiful statue because um, it's, it's blindfolded, it has the you know, uh, sword of justice in the hand. Problem is it's but, a but, woman but also she's and it's wearing, not got a burqa on. She, she's, got a, she's wearing a sari. Oh, that's impossible. It's, too, <laughs> it's, it's just, you know. They can't have it. They can't have women unveiled. And I think that, that's because according thing. to Sharia justice, it's usually... A man who should be the carrier of justice and women should be way under there so I guess they don't so really they're like they're ripping themselves apart but it, you know international sort of uh, human rights free thinkers and people in Bangladesh are you know opposing this have if you see their video I mean just, it's funny it's just I like, suggest we send Shabana Rahman there to pick a couple of them up <laughs> maybe throw them up in the air <laughs>
Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.